Okay, we're recording here. This is a recording about millennials, and the term millennials are 25 to 35. And in California, if you went to USC or UCLA or even a, a state school, you've got a lot of you got a lot of debt, and these people can't buy houses. So we're talking with Terry, who's a, a mortgage expert. What can you talk about? Millennials and how can they get houses using creative terms like seller financing, Terry? What can you do to help these people? Oh, thanks for having me, Brian, on, on this call. And, and um, we were just talking about an article on Market Watch that said that millennials um, aren't entering into the market the way previous, um, previous uh sectors of young people used to and it's true and and um, you know really I think um, I have four kids and uh, they range from 17 to 32 and I've already I, I consider myself an expert on this part of it because uh, I truly believe in real estate and owning it and I've trained my kids to to for the American dream, you know, and, and we've bought and sold many homes, and my kids have experienced that with us. And we've, we've, above all, we've taught all of our kids about finance and about financial planning. And, and now I see the struggles. Um, I have a, a 32-year-old daughter that um, sh she's a nurse. He, uh, her husband is an attorney. They have no kids yet. They postponed, like that article says, having children. Mm -hmm. um, and they can't afford a mortgage um, mm -hmm. with, like, plus 150000 in student loan debt for her husband, you know, uh, graduate school um, student well, loans. I think, I think another way to phrase it is they can't qualify for the mortgage, but they can pay the mortgage payment, and they could probably get the down payment down. On seller financing, they just can't get jump through all the hoops with the new laws with 43% debt to earnings. That has really exactly. put a cramp into, you know, a stranglehold on the recovery is what that article is all about. That millennials aren't stepping up into first home buyers because they can't get through this 43% window. Now, uh, here's another article. Uh, I was looking at this uh, mortgage broker that was complaining that he had this wonderful applicant for a mortgage, and she had 20 years on the job. She had 20% down, but her debt-to-earnings ratio was around 45%. Just missed, you know, that just missed thing. And they can't get the mortgage with a big down payment like that. Isn't that ridiculous? But it totally is, and, and that – goes to show you that the rules and the laws, um, banks won't bend at all. It's, it's, it's cut and dry, and it's, it's 43 or nothing. Yep. And, and it goes beyond that, even on a credit report. It, it, it's, if you have a, a ticket or, a uh, let's say, a parking ticket that's gone to your credit report, mm -hmm. you can't get a loan, <laughs> and it's ridiculous. Um, you've got a source over $500 that runs through your bank account. And let's say you get uh, – don't get me started. It's, oh, I know. Seller, I know. Fin <laughs> seller financing is the answer. Sure. But, well, uh, what we want to do is is people that are listening to this recording, let's say that they had they were a parent of a child that was in their 20s, late 20s, early 30s that had a lot of student loan debt. What would be the first step for them – to be able to buy a house on seller financing, if they could, let's say, put down 10% and they had the amount of money per month on a, on a mortgage, but they just couldn't qualify through traditional means, what could that parent do to help that child? Let me give you an example um, because I have also a 27-year-old that, that I've, I've helped out. Okay. So uh, my 27-year-old, she went to school back east to um, uh, close to an Ivy League school and graduated. She's, she's 27 now. She passed her CPA exam. She's working nice. in New York for a five, Fortune 500 company. And she can't afford a home in New York, even under FHA. I 
think her maximum mortgage amount is $200,000. Now, um, as a parent, I will not co-sign for a student loan right. because um, with a child, you know, it's, it's their debt, and I can choose to help them later, mm -hmm. but I don't want to be on that debt because I feel like that's their life. And, and if they don't make it through school, mm -hmm. they still got that burden and you can't bankruptcy out of student loan debt. And so that's, mm -hmm. that's our own family planning situation. However, what we did was we went back to her college town where she, where she graduated mm -hmm. and we started looking at, at homes around the campus because she realized that um, they're older homes and she went, you can have five students, or, or, or five bedroom homes and you can have, um, and if the prices are really low, they're like 150 or less. Right. And you can get a 20% cash flow off of uh, student housing close to the campus. And she, she played softball there, mm -hmm. so she has the source for the rentals. Mm -hmm. And so we, we made an offer on a house that um, took over the existing loan mm -hmm. and with uh, about... 15% down, mm -hmm. and it cash flows like a 20% cash flow, and that's wow. her way to to pay off her student student loan through me helping her invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. And so instead of paying for it, instead of being obligated to the debt, I'm teaching my kids to own and invest in real estate and refinance out of it um, once they they can. To oh. handle handle the cash flow that it's going to take to pay off that eighty thousand in this case eighty thousand that she has in student loan debt. What you just so. gave her was a cash machine, is what you did. Yes. You created yep. a cash machine to get her out of student loan debt faster. You saved her a lot of interest on that student loan uh, by you know getting it paid quickly. Uh, you gave her some stress relief that she's not got this ball and chain on her ankle and um, she could actually move out of that area and get a property manager and still have the cash machine. There's all sorts of things you gave her. You know, my brother went to Vassar in upstate New York, Poughkeepsie, and my sister went to Sarah Lawrence down in Bronxville. Where, where did your where'd your daughter go to? Uh, she went to Lehigh in Pennsylvania. Nice. And, uh, and yeah, and... Uh, Played a sport there, got a great degree, and, and, mm -hmm. and decided to stay in the New York area and back east. So when we went back there a couple of weeks ago, she said, Daddy, you know, I want to I wanna invest in real estate. I can't own a home yet in New York. I don't qualify. However, you know, let's do this. And, and so we went and looked at property, and, and that's what we're doing. And she right. gets it. What a great idea. You know, there's a lot of student housing investors out there. And if you're a, a – let's say that you're in a college town and you're an agent, you could have a whole cottage industry where you have a list of all the undergrads and you contact all their parents and it says, why don't you make some money while your child is going to school? Why don't you help your child get their student loan debt down by getting them an investment property in their name. Why don't you get them on the property ladder today so that when they do step out into the real world, they can go get a house? So, you know, it, it, what a wonderful kind of business plan for agents and, and real estate investors that could, if they are anchored in a college town and they know it really well, they could use that basic plan that you just put and use it as a cookie cutter, couldn't they? Yeah, actually, my kids, um, we live in San Diego, and we're close to three, three uh, colleges here, UCSD, USD, and San Diego State. And um, we actually uh, own property in Mission Beach, and, and that was their education. That's why Brooke said, um, Daddy, you know, let's go to Lehigh and do what you, you guys did in San Diego, because she sees that it can work, and it does work. And I've, we've educated them. That's something that parents don't do, first of all, uh, um, is, is educate their kids. It's like their personal finances are, are their thing, and it's like none of your business. And my parents were the same way. Um, and, and, I, 
and we took it upon, my wife and I took it upon us to educate our kids, to know what our financial problems are, because we're in real estate and we don't have a regular paycheck, and know, you know, when the economy changes, we, we, we have to find another way to make a living or another way to, the shift, the Gary, Gary Keller shift book, you have to find a way to, to get back on, on, on the saddle again, because you just fell off. And our kids, we educated them through that, and I think they're going to be better for that. And and so, so as a parent, there's that. As a child or as as a, a millennial, um, I think we need to market to them and teach them. We didn't educate them either in school or as parents yeah. how to how to be financially successful in life. No. And really, um, that's now it's my job or it's our job. Um, through investors or however we can. I really feel passionate about this subject. So. Well, one of the here's an ancillary part. If you can get them even younger, like 15, 16, there's a book called uh, Rich Kid, Smart Kid by Robert Kiyosaki, or Rich Dad, Poor Dad fame. And he, they talk right. about what's a balance sheet, what's an asset, what's a liability, you know, in just very, very basic terms. And financial literacy in this country, as far as what's a mortgage, uh, what's a retirement plan, what's a credit rating, uh, what's debt to income ratio, all the basics that you need to know, they aren't taught in high school, they aren't taught at the kitchen table. Uh, you know, rule of 72, what's that? You know, all the very, very right. basic things. Uh, so, you know, financial literacy, I think, is a, a really important thing. Um, and just as an aside, one of my successful students in upstate New York, up by Rochester, he uh, went to the boys club with Rich Kid Smart Kid, and he taught the kids that were twiddling their thumbs, just shooting hoops about the basics of finance. And um, he also gave a donation for every We Buy Houses house that he bought uh, to the boys club. And he got leads through shopkeepers in Rochester that loved the Boys Club, and they gave him like a $500 donation to the Boys Club. So there's all sorts of ways you can marry in financial literacy with, you know, helping your backyard understand the basics of real estate and real estate investment. Um, so it, just boil this thing down. We'll have a link under this video of this article we're talking about at Market Watch. But if you're a millennial or a parent of a millennial, what? How can we help them get their their first property? What's what are the steps? How would you advise them um, to do that? Well, I would have to say um, anything's possible in real estate. First of all, learn, read, read Rich Dad Poor Dad, read read how money works, read how how internal rate of return works. Um, return on investment, all those things. And then I would have to say, you can own a home today if you have a job and a, and a down payment. And there's there's ways, and, and I own my first home at 18. Um, and there's ways that you can do it without going to the bank and, and having the bank turn you down. Mm -hmm. And you can get parents, you can get mentors, you can get, there's just, you know, if you have the desire and, and the want, and, and you can go, um, you can achieve your goals. And, and if, if that's owning a house and, and gathering wealth and, and experiencing how money works and leverage, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's possible. Don't mm -hmm. let a bank tell you you don't qualify because uh, banks are idiots. Well, they have a very narrow scope these days with the new laws. Um, what I usually tell my real estate investors or my FISBOs or my landlords, if they want to market their house on seller financing uh, and help a buyer buy the property on terms and also make a good rate of return for your trouble, here are your steps. The first step you do, you get on Craigslist and you say, we got a gorgeous property that we will consider if you can qualify for owner financing and you have a good job, you know, just call us, and that's step one. You gather some leads, and then you, you, you ask them some very basic questions over the phone, and then they send them to an RMLO like yourself to do some, you know, basically ability to repay roll and take a look at 
what they can do. And um, if it looks good, then they put their down payment down, they create the documentation, and they go through a title company or an attorney, and they sell their home on terms. And that's how you can get started if you're selling on terms. If you're buying on terms, it's, I think it's a little harder. You need to get on Craigslist and say the following. Would you consider owner financing or rent to own on your house if you got full price for your house? That's all you got to say on Craigslist. If you had a FISBO or a landlord, if it's a landlord, you might want to say something like, if I gave you a two-year lease, would you consider selling to me at the end of that lease for full price? Now, that's you're doing some yeah. fishing and some marketing when you do that, but we find that, you know, you can find a great house that way if you're trying to buy on terms. And credit doesn't really matter as much as the ability to repay. That's the most important thing, that debt-to-earnings ratio, all those kinds of things is very, very important. Um, in closing, do you have any other questions about, uh, or comments to make about millennials, people 25, 35 with a lot of student loan debt? Um, I would have to say that, that if, they've, if they've got a good job and they've got a good prospect, they're working in, in the, the trade that they, they learned in, in college, um, go for it. Um, see if you can get help with a down payment or, or um, there's, so, there's so many options. Find a real estate agent that, that understands finance because that's where it's at is, is finance. And um, just um, don't don't accept no as an answer, and anything's possible. That's my comment. I totally agree. Well, thanks for this recording on millennials, and uh, check the links down below, and we'll be happy to help you any way we can. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, so what I'll do here.